Bingo! We did it. We are up. We are live. It is happening. What up? This post doing the comment thing. Hi, Ivy. Pin that comment. Hi, DJ McLean VO. I'm simply charming. And my mom. Hi, mom. I love you. Hello, John Sites. Mm-hmm. Brandon. Hello. Buzz Baker. Hi, Justin. <laughs> Miss you. Love you, Fuzz Baker. It's the Soul Survivor and Proctor Ingram. Which one are you? Wow. You know what? I mean, if you don't even know your friend's op credits, are you even friends? No, but it's one of them is you, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. Let me introduce everyone to my BFF. JP Carliac. Who are you again? Are you, uh, who, who plays, um, aren't you that, that, uh, little girl? On, no, okay. Yes, yes, I am absolutely play the little girl on whatever show you were thinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Between Two Nerds, your favorite show about voter registration that also chats with your favorite notable nerds. I'm JP <laughs> Carliac. <laughs> and I'm Cordy Taylor. Uh, and today we have an amazing guest, but I, we, I am cutting off one of my eyeballs. There we go. Bingo. Uh, today we have an amazing guest for you. We have Kari Walgren in the hizzles. If she figured out how to use IG Live. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> this is, this is all hinging on her tech skills. Kari, we believe in you. Everybody clap. You can do it. <laughs> She's out there somewhere, you guys. If you clap, she'll live. Um... Yeah, so uh, cool things going on in voter registration world. Um, Michigan is now going to be sending out voter registration application. uh, So an application to vote by mail will be sent to everybody in Michigan. So not the ballot itself, but the... um, Don't believe the hype. It's the application that you send in so that they will send you a ballot. Correct. Yes. So not perfect, but we're getting there. So it's awesome that that's happening. And as we mentioned last time, California has been added to the list of states that will be sending you a ballot automatically. That includes Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Washington, and Utah. So we we're getting there. Um, Which is great because some of those states, and I'm not going to single anybody out. Nope. Have some of the lowest voter returns, some of the lowest amount of people stepping out to vote in all the states. So if you're in one of those states, do it. Yes. And if you want to find out uh, what your state's regulations are and how you can get a ballot, look at our comment right here, bit.ly slash nerds at home, so you can make sure that you receive an absentee ballot. Um, And we should mention, like, uh, not everybody is going to vote via... Uh, absentee ballot. And that's okay. Like, there will be uh, polls that will be open in rural areas that will be probably safe to go to in November. So by all means, do that. But if you're in a metropolitan area or you just don't feel safe to go to the polls in November, at least you have a ballot that you can cast safely. So just keep that in mind. And also, there's always the option. Some some states, you're just like, hey, I actually just want to have, like in California, I do vote by mail. I don't always vote by mail. Sometimes I go in and I just hand them my ballot. They rip it up and I do it, you know, manually. Sometimes I skip the huge freaking line and skip my way in and drop it in the box. And sometimes I actually put it in the mailbox. So um, there's lots of options. But it's not just for presidential elections, remember. Every when you election. have the option to vote by mail, all those little elections that you forget about until the day of when you're watching the news and you're like, oh, no. that way you can just grab your ballot, pop it in the mail, and as long as it's postmarked by midnight that night, you're good to go. So it's always better to have the option than to not have the option. COVID, non-COVID, elderly. Whatever's going on. Whatever. And just so you know, for the primaries that are still going on, and when I we say primaries, it's not just a, whatever they picked the president, the presidential candidates. Yes, they have. However, there's still plenty of issues and other candidates for smaller races that are being decided in your primary. So if you live in West Virginia, Kentucky, Montana, Maryland, or New York, deadlines are coming. West Virginia actually already passed, um, but some of these other states. So check it out. Curry's on, and also Shelby. Hi, Shelby. Um, 
we're fixing your t-shirt thing today. Um, so Kari's here. All right, cool. Let, into the chat. let me press the button thingy and we will get it going. Uh, everybody, we are so excited to uh, welcome our dear friend and amazing of the voiceover, Kari Walgren. Yeah. Ah! Oh my gosh, this is this is the first for me. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's real, she lives. She lives. <laughs> I do, I live, I live. Kari, I, look what I'm wearing in honor of you. You know what, I noticed that and I, I just, I literally out loud went, aww. <laughs> and I want you to know that that was totally a pre-quarantine picture. I looked at that and then I went, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Remember those days? <laughs> Remember those days. <laughs> Remember when we got dressed up because we knew we'd see other people in person? <laughs> That's right. Remember when we showered regularly? Yeah. I don't know, is it just me? It just we me? were young and slim and full of hope. <laughs> yes. Them's was good days. Them's Those was good days. Good days. Those were good um, days. Everybody, uh, so this is Kari. Kari, everybody. Um, be sure to, um, uh, you'll see that little question uh, mark box at the bottom of your chat. Uh, feel free to throw in some questions for Kari, and we will get to them throughout the stream. Uh, but for right now, Kari, what is something weird or different that you have started doing since this all began? Um that you well, feel comfortable sharing on air. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I think that you have segued quite nicely with your wardrobe choice because oh. um, we're actually still putting together a Slot Her album. Mm. So it, although it has slowed down tremendously since we've all been kind of stuck at home, we are still piecing together some bits of the album. And uh, we actually have uh, made a couple of little videos of our, ourselves playing from our respective places that we're going to be putting up pretty soon. So, and will those? And oh. So let's walk this back for a second because for those who I don't know, some people might know not know what slaughter is. So give us yes. a little background. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I love. And some of you youngins out there are probably way too young to maybe know this band, but I love this band, this hair band called Slaughter. And they were really huge, like in the early 90s, late 80s. Um, and so I have started this band called Slaughter. Uh, and it is uh, mostly all women uh, playing Slaughter songs in all different genres of music. So uh, we were doing live shows uh, before the quarantine happened and stuff like that. And we're putting together uh, an album and it's just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. The kids there have seen the show and it's a good time, so. Awesome. Good question for you. Uh, yeah. Who's Noah Waldron? Any relation? <gasps> that's my nephew. Yay. Oh, well, let's wave at him. Oh my goodness. Girl. Oh. Hi, Noah. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, my gosh. I wish we could throw another per uh, Instagram is limited in what we could do. If we could throw in another person. That That's would... so cool, though. Hi, Noah. Oh, my gosh. That's We'd be really... like, tell us all about Auntie Kari. <laughs> oh, and he just said hi, Auntie. That's so cute. Oh, my gosh. My heart is exploding. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, somebody just asked, so random segue real quick. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh. Uh... That's a great question. I think we need to add that to our standard questions. Yeah, yeah it is. And a they great ask question. all of us. So, Court, you and I will also be answering this. You know, I'm. It's it's kind of a, a general answer, but chocolate chip, because I feel oh, like a it's, good one. it's the perfect amount of vanilla, the perfect amount of chocolate, and you can top it with a ton of different stuff. So, like, if you want to do the drizzle it with chocolate sauce or. Mm -hmm. nuts or cherries or yeah it's it's just kind of that perfect perfect flavor it's a goodie it's a mm. goodie court what's yours that's well i'm gonna take over the bougie department here then um <laughs> and, uh, passion fruit okay. ube <laughs> well, my, my flavor of the week right now that i've been macking on every day oh. uh ube malted crunch from wanderlust oh so week. good i've had that it's because so good i'm psycho for malt like ever since I was a little kid, I love malt. Like, and my my mom's on this 
this thing right now, but I'm going to talk a little poop right now. So we didn't get stuff like Ovaltine in, my ha in our house because it had too much sugar in it. So I remember going to one of my mom's friend's houses and house sitting and uh, taking an entire bottle of Ovaltine, a jar of Ovaltine, and sitting under the house with a spoon and eating dry Ovaltine, like the entire jar, because I loved malt so much and I knew I was never going to have it. And so <laughs> now anything that has malt in the ice cream, I'm still psycho for, but I'm oh, also yeah. super high on um, uh, salt and straws, salted caramel. Oh yeah, oh. but but salt and straws, um, salted malted chocolate chip cookie dough is outrageous as well. You guys are you guys are making me so hungry for ice cream right now. I, I will say I will say Love Potion number thirty one at Baskin Robbins is that? really delicious. It's like white chocolate ice cream with a raspberry ribbon, and then it's got dark chocolate hearts with raspberry filling. Oh God, sprinkled in. That's like Valentine's Day fell apart in a cup. Like Yes, yes. <laughs> Little fun fact about JP Cardiac. Um, he is an ice cream monster. And uh, <laughs> so much so that if you guys are Guilty. familiar with salt and straw, um, they are this amazing chain that's here on the West Coast. I don't know where else they are. but they And maybe one in Florida. <laughs> as well, yes, of course. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, okay. But they change their flavors every month. There's like six six monthly flavors mm -hmm. and I can literally call JP Carliac at the on the first day of the month and be like what are salt and straws flavors and he will not only have them memorized but have tasted each one and give you an in-depth description of all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so how are you how are you feeding that obsession during So I've been I have been getting I've been ha getting delivery of pints from a rotating group of local ice creameries. What? <laughs> How do, you, how do you get that and not have the ice cream like falling apart? By the time uh, I mean, like, those. Melted. Luckily, they're all within like a, like a mile or two. So did you, you know, move to that quick. place with that in mind? Did I what? Did you get your apartment with that strategic location in mind? Oh, that I have like six uh, gourmet yes. ice cream ice creameries. <laughs> I must have. Yes, you did. So I'm, like just subconsciously, totally. Yeah, that like happened. Wonder Woman. But we've been getting Wanderlust. Uh, Van Leeuwen's, which is so good, McConnell's. Um, we haven't gotten salt and straw yet, which is weird, uh, because they're outside of our delivery radius. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'll have to drive to them at some point. But McConnell's, the uh, Earl Grey shortbread biscuit. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Oh, and Jenny's, Jenny's, so good. I, I know none of these places except for salt and straw. And I, I really feel like there's going to be an there's ice a, there run is run. There's at future. least two that are definitely within your delivery radius. So I'll I'll send you a little message after this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Start a second IG live. Just basically. Yeah, just out about, about ice cream. We'll just talk about ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're basically, according to the comments, everyone now wants ice cream. Yeah. Sorry about Pretty it. Much. That's right. I, I, I'm, I'm doing my work for the culinary economy right now. That's right. It's the, it's the power of persuasion. Yes. Add hearts if you want ice cream. Uh, anyway, we were talking about slaughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> where we totally got off the rails. Um, so, uh, so you started this band, which is a tribute band to an 80s hair band. Correct. Who knows that you exist and love you, correct? Well, they, they kind of like us. I think. Mm -hmm. I, think. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't say that they love us, but they 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 dig what they're they fans. They They're like, fans. They like they appreciate your work. Um, <laughs> they appreciate our and work. And you're still recording an album, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So I'm when it, when does the next video drop? That like when is the next opportunity for us folk here to consume not ice cream but uh, some slaughter material? I would say within the next um, probably within the next few days. It's, Ooh, okay. it's, it's, a very, it's at the very tail end of being um, edited. So you can either check on my Instagram page, Kari Walgren, uh, or you, we do have a Slot Her Music Instagram page. So uh, we'll, we'll or be Can you put that in the chat, the, the yeah. Slot Her? Oh, can I, I, I? You know, I can try. I don't know. I'll, I'll get it later. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I can... It, yeah, it's at, slot her, it's at Slot Her Music, right? Yes, correct. Yes. And it's S-L-A-U-G-H-T-H-E-R? Correct. Yeah. 
Okay, no, Courtney's on it. On there. Done. Courtney's on it. Bingo. There I'll it is. just do. I'll just do little to rock fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <There we> go. <laughs> so. So now that we've gotten through the important stuff, yeah, really uh, welcome important. to our voter registration. <laughs> Yay, and thank show. you for having me. Thank you for uh, having me. Absolutely. On. So, Kari, do you remember um, one of the, the one of your first voting experiences, or do you have a, a memorable voting experience? I, you know, I, I do remember. Um, I grew up in this very very small town in Kansas, and um, so. I mean, we're, we're, it was small enough that there was like a red brick road that was the main, the main street and everything. So we had one big city building in the town. And mm -hmm. I remember like going into that city building and, you know, filling out the information and, and uh, officially being, uh, you know, a voter and, uh, and then getting to vote after that. And uh, it, it, it felt like a very puff your chest up, important turn in life. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, I would say hopefully, and it was, and it was a little intimidating and, and, and I do still find like a lot of this, this information can be a little overwhelming. So I love what you guys are doing. And, uh, and also it's, it's super important to keep talking about this with, with your friends because, you know, we, the three of us are friends and um you know if i ever feel like i have a a stupid question about something uh it's not a stupid question and i have friends that i can ask about it so uh i love that and i, I do think it's just really important that um that you get a couple of friends around you that if you have questions you're like i'm trying to figure out how to do this or you know uh that you, you, know, just up. Up. you reach out to people yeah mm -hmm. right Absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, voting is complicated and it varies from state to state, sometimes town to town. And, yes. you know, there's so many things that pop up on ballots and propositions and everything. So, yeah, it's it's we are big fans of collaborative, not to necessarily decision making, but collaborative information getting. Yeah. And just helping each other, um, yeah. you know, and I the, the two of you and then I have a couple of other friends that um, have been super helpful. So whenever I have questions and, you know, sometimes a lot of that you were mentioning kind of at the beginning, a lot of the little issues or the smaller races and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There can be so much of that that's on the ballot that you you don't know how, you know, to find information to research it and everything. And um, yeah, I just I just have a few friends that are always really awesome about like, well, what are some good sites that you're finding to get information about this or Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so segue to our favorite question that we ask everybody, who are you voting for? And when we ask this, we're not asking specifically which candidates are you voting for? But when you will be casting your ballot this November, who will be on your mind uh, that you want that that vote to help? Um, I I would say that I'm I'm going to be really thinking about the generation coming after me mm -hmm. because you know I can think of a certain number of issues that are very important to me personally, mm -hmm. um, and I can think of things that uh, that you know that I actively want to vote on but there are other things you know like i don't i don't necessarily have children but i i think that education is super important and so i'm trying to think of uh people in my life that have kids you know right and so how do how does my vote on certain issues affect the people i know that have children and i you know i i am straight but i have friends who are not so how do my votes affect the people in my life that I know that um, will be affected by mm -hmm. decisions on, on certain legislation. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I, you know, with that in mind, you know, I would like the, the climate and the world and stuff to be around for another few generations. So yeah, I just, I guess with my vote, I'll be trying to think about the people coming after me and, and trying to leave things a little bit better than, than, I, than they are now, hopefully. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and do you, 
do you typically vote in person now? Or like, aside from the pandemic, like, would you ordinarily be voting in person or would you be voting by mail? Like, what's your typical routine? You know, in the past, like years back, um, I would go in person, but now mm -hmm. I really prefer to do it by mail mm -hmm. um, because um, it's just less stressful for me because I feel like I can, I can sit down, I can take all the time that I want to, to kind of work through it. If I, you know, run up against something on the ballot that I've, uh, that I don't understand or that I've forgotten, like, oh, what, what did I want to do about that? You know, I just like being able to take my time and pull things up on my laptop and refresh my memory about, like, how I wanted to vote on certain propositions. So, yeah, I like to do it at home now. Yeah, I, we're the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the voting booth is so much nicer. It's also my video booth, but, you know. <laughs> but you know, and, and I know a lot of people that just that that really love the in person feel of it. Like you know, they're they really enjoy that sense of community and camaraderie and stuff like that. I just you know, I'm just kind of a hermit, you guys. So any any excuse that I can get to do something at home, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, now's the time. <laughs> now's the, yeah. Now's the time. Introverts unite. Yeah, I mean, like living my best freaking life. I hate to say it, but being an, an like, what is it, an extroverted introvert? Yeah, I am just like, I am all, all or nothing. First of all, I don't know if I'm ever going to wear a bra again. Second of Amen, all, uh, preach the truth. Amen. Amen. Truth. Amen. But, but literally, like, if ever I was that person that was like. I'm showered, I'm in like, you know, some outrageous outfit or whatever. Like as as one of my directors said, you are you are either haute couture or homeless um looking. And that is truly where I'm at now and it's just getting cemented where I'm either just gonna like just be in my pajamas forever going forward, COVID or not. And then like once a month I'll come out with makeup and shower and done the whole night. Yeah. You know, I, I appreciate what you're saying. However, one of your superpowers, Courtney Taylor, is to make homeless still somehow look sort of chic. <laughs> so, so while I don't... Vagrant you know, chic. Right. That's right, yes. Vagrant yeah. bavoom. Yeah. Homeless no couture. Vagrants that may be watching. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so so Courtney, I just want you guys to know out there that Courtney's idea of of looking kind of schluffy is uh, still about ten times more cool than what most of the the rest of us look like when we're trying really hard. So it's just well, her, thank you for the price, you Courtney. <laughs> we're very close to each other, so I made you a greasy hair drive by just to scare the crap out of her. Yes, please, I'll take it. Please do, please do it with curlers and a cigarette. Just <laughs> Hey, sorry. A very long cigarette. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Uh, take it away. I have to put a dog outside. <laughs> That's not a euphemism for putting That's it down, by the way. Like, this isn't a goal. <laughs> probably has to put a dog outside. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. A, it's not an old yeller joke. No. Um, Kari, uh, hold up. There was somebody who asked a question about slaughter that I wanted to throw at you. Uh, Where, what town are you from in Canada? Oh my gosh, Allison. From KU, hi. What is your most favorite Slaughter song? Oh, um, so okay, they have a, a song "Desperately" that is so good. Like if you just want to dance around in your house and like slide down a wall or something, play "Desperately" in your in your living room. It's glorious. Okay. <laughs> so about sliding down the wall. What's that? Explain more about sliding. Yeah, tell us about that. <laughs> well, you know, they would always do that in the 80s music videos. Like, they'd be up against a wall and they'd, like, slide down the wall. Yeah. yeah. If I was your girl. Yeah, all that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but Allison's so good. Much love to you, too. Oh, my gosh. And I saw Andre checked in there, too. So, hi, Andre, if you're still on. Hi. Uh, so, Kari, in the in the midst of everything going on, you're working on an album. Uh, how are you? How are you keeping your creative juices flowing? You know, that I would say that in particular, uh, the the music project is kind of how I'm keeping um, 
a lot of the creative juices flowing. Mm -hmm. The thing that I've actually really enjoyed about this time is um, just kind of having a little bit more time to sort of decompress and disconnect a little bit. Like people have been saying, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm totally binge watching this show or the show. And I've, I've been reading a lot uh, during the quarantine. So I don't know if that's maybe creative fulfillment or if it's just soul fulfillment. Sure. So um, that's just been kind of recharging my battery in a nice way. Very cool. I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of those dorks that reads a lot, you guys. What, what is, what's it, uh, anything in particular that you're reading that's real good? Um, oh, man. So there's, <laughs> Courtney's read this too. There's a book called The Power that's amazing. It's amazing, kind of like sci-fi sci book. Um, mm -hmm. I read this, this book called Untamed by Glennon Doyle, which was a really great memoir. And, uh, and if you want something that's kind of like a fun, supernatural James Bond kind of thing, I read a book called The Rook. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really fun one. So those are, those are a few that have been great. Okay. Thanks, Kari, for your reading list. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, from Shady Shiper. This is a question for all of us. Uh -huh. What is your favorite cartoon character and why? Oh, it's the, it's the infamous question. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I can never pick. It's like, it's too hard. I mean, um, I know my answer, but... Okay, go for it, Jakey. You know your answer. It's Skeletor. It will always be Skeletor. <laughs> so this is a character, now, can you say, this is a character you haven't even voiced. It's have just not, your have favorite. Have never voiced. I mean, would die to. But, like, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been my main squeeze since I was what, three? When did Masters of the Universe come out? 82? So, That yeah. says a lot about your taste in men. Yes, I like, the, I like them bony-faced. Completely <laughs> emaciated, <laughs> next, very know. little nose, if any at all. And wearing blue, apparently. Yes, yes. Like, I had the Tila doll, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did. I she had the Tila spoken. doll. She was mm -hmm. awesome. Um, man. Batman the Animated Series, that was definitely my my favorite cartoon series. Oh yeah, oh so good. It's just, just phenomenal. Um, as far as like ones that I've played though, I can't pick one. There's too many. There's yeah. Too many yeah. Court, what's your, what's your favorite cartoon character? Oh, God. I'm terrible at this stuff. Uh, I mean, of course, so this is my, my first instinct is, uh, I freaking love Bugs Bunny. Because Bugs Bunny got away with so much stuff. Got away with murder. Yes. <laughs> that, like, I go back and watch Bugs Bunny now, and I'm like, oh, my God. He, these cartoons are so old. And when he's doing the um, <clears throat> the episode where uh, he floats on his mattress into the mad scientist's place, and then they're, they're, they smash up with a bottle of ether. And they're high on ether. Mm -hmm. Or he's, you know, he's being the super gay hairdresser and doing the red things. Thing. My stars. They monsters are such interesting people. Interesting people. Love and it. Favorite thing. So that to me, I go like, wow, what an amazing way to Trojan horse in a lot of really funny stuff for adults. Yes. What was a kid's cartoon, I guess. Well, I mean, cartoons weren't really ostensibly for children until later, you know, it was, it was like, it all came up in the movie reel whenever, when people went to the movies, they'd see some Looney Tunes, they'd see a newsreel, they'd see the feature, you know, it was all, it was all for everybody. And then, and then, I don't know, television came along and ruined it for all of us. And, yeah. Oh, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a couple of people just saying hi, by the way, before Tide, hi. Jonathan Seitz, hi. Anyway. As a matter of fact, uh, tying in, Jonathan, John Seitz asked uh, earlier on uh, our post what, how, they wanted to know how, it, how does it feel to be a part of Looney Tunes? Because you've done some Looney Tunes characters, correct? Yeah, you know, I have. And, and they've got the new relaunch of, of a bunch of the episodes coming out, um, mm -hmm. which I'm super excited about. They're There's gorgeous. Of, they're so gorgeous. They're so in the spirit of the originals. Yeah. And... Um, 
yeah, there's just something that feels very iconic about it. So it's, it's awesome. And, you know, I just play little incidental characters here and there and, um, you know, but you get to interact with Porky Pig and, you know, Bugs Bunny or it's just fantastic. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it, it kind of brings out my inner kid. Yeah. And they're also like, and when, so is Looney Tunes recorded individually or do you guys do it all together? You know, we don't necessarily do it all together, but sometimes they get us in, in little clumps. Oh, so, great. So um, Fred Tattashore and I have recorded some stuff together and a few other people. Uh, and then some of them were just by myself, so. Yeah. Well, luckily that whole cast is full of horrible people. No, they're all wonderful. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Yeah. Every single one. Boring, not funny. Yeah. Not no. talented. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! In a little bit with that, Kari, um, and I think you know I've heard you. I've sat adoringly in the audience when you have been interviewed, so it's super fun to do this now. But um, Inkwell, nineteen thirty-one, has the question for you um, that since they know that you were pretty into comics, and I have seen you speak knowledgeably about comics as well, what's your favorite comic book character, artist, and comic book in general? Answer one. Answer two. Answer three. None. Okay. Well, I am wearing my Wonder Woman shirt. There it is. So, uh, Wonder Woman, since I was a little tiny girl, uh, has been my favorite comic book character. I've got a ridiculous amount of coffee mugs in my yes. kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Most of them are Wonder Woman. Um, I do have a few, like Supergirl. Uh, got a Catwoman mug. So some other ones, but Wonder Woman's totally my favorite. Um, artists, uh, I can't, I don't know that I can pick a favorite artist, but I love, as far as comic book writers, I love Gail Simone. Oh. Uh, she writes female characters in the most amazing way. Um, and she did a run of Wonder Woman and she did a run of Birds of Prey. That is one of my favorite comic book runs. Um, and she also did a run of Batgirl that was really excellent. That picks up when, oh my gosh, now I'm getting out like really nerdy. But um, you know, the whole thing when Batgirl, when Joker paralyzes oh, yeah. her, injures her. Uh -huh. uh, and so it's basically her getting this, this medical attention and healing and then trying to resume her Batgirl life. And she's kind of rusty. So it's, you know, and she's a little PTSD about what yeah. happened. So um, it goes into that storyline and it's just so great. Yeah. Awesome. I feel like you should never apologize for getting really nerdy because the name of our show is Between Two Nerds. So yeah. Touche. <laughs> Touche. You're right. It's a nerd freely. Mm -hmm. so, I, so yeah. I shouldn't apologize for the fact that I've been reading a lot in the quarantine too. Reading's cool, yeah. kids. Yeah. Reading is sexy. <laughs> Read, reading is fundamental. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, uh, there was one other question that somebody had that I wanted to throw at you. Yes. Oh, here's a goodie. Um, because we were just talking about uh, your uh, DC favorites, do you have any favorite moments playing Zatanna? Oh, oh my gosh. Um, it's where you and I got to work on a video game together. I, that was the first thing um, you worked on, and I was in love. All right, what? Let me see. Yeah, I remember. I'm giving you a virtual I'm, hug. To give some dirt, but um, no, it's not dirt. But uh, the first time I remember um, sort of coming across Kari Walgren was in the auditions for uh, uh, Justice League Heroes. <gasps> oh man, that was that was such a good one. Yeah. The heroes, yeah. I mean, uh, I think that's my earliest memory of you. But yes, I mean, my gosh, you've taken Zatanna and just made her your own. So good, so good. It was really cool to come back to it. You know, like to to get to play it many many years ago, and then and then get to come back and and do this new uh, version of her. And you know, still she has all of that sass and all of that. I mean, just total musical theater kid, and so. I think some of my favorite scenes were she's working on school plays 
or school musicals and things like that. And so it just totally takes me back to my high school drama days, which- Your the choir days? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Corey taught me this word, these words. Show choir? I didn't know show what choir. it was until about a year ago, guys. That's right. How did you miss out? Okay. How could you, yeah, show choir is a real thing. That was, I, I mean- I didn't even know that my high school <laughs> football team left track <laughs> I literally tell this a lot about you. what show choir was, and Kari looked at me like I was from space, and <laughs> was like, "It was just like, not, we, like we traveled." And I was like, "Yeah, doing like, what?" what you... <laughs> yeah, Chicky, like, you, Chicky, you had to be in show choir. Oh, I absolutely was. Okay, yes. I mean, a pop clap and a jazz square and a jazz triangle, jazz like. Dance. What, what was life without those things? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Even now, it's like a foreign language, guys. See, this is the thing. She's got a Wonder Woman shirt on. He's got a Slaughter shirt on, and I've got a Misfits shirt. And I think that's... Oh, see? <laughs> and that's why I love you guys. That's... Yeah. The differences are what make the yeah. world go round, kids. <laughs> that's true. That is yeah. very true. It is, it is, it is what, and it's what makes our group of friends so fun, is how, how island of misfit toys we are. It's so <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, so uh, everybody who's in, uh, who's watching right now, uh, we're going to sign off. But our tradition is, is that our guest will sign off in the voice of the character that you choose. So pick one of your favorite Kari Waldron characters, and they will sign off the show as them. That's a lot of choices. Just I know. There's a ton. Because uh, I've seen people, Ooh. some people have said Zatanna, some people have said somebody, okay, we got Haru Haruko. Uh, just do like a show choir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do a medley. A pop clap, tip tap, what did you call it? Oh, Queen Ozma. Oh, oh Queen Ozma, oh my gosh. And, yeah. and JP was our, our fantastic tin man. Oh my gosh, on that show. Did you do that Oz convention yet? It's Saturday. It's oh my Saturday. Gosh. So just tell, a little shout tell out to everyone. Everybody. Yeah, yourself. we're doing a uh, like a Wizard of Oz virtual convention on Saturday. It's five p.m. California time. Uh, so do the math for wherever eight all p.m. Eastern. Uh -huh. Yes, wherever you're all located. <laughs> but it's it's gonna be super cool. They're they're talking um, to. Um, uh, the guy that wrote the Wicked book, uh, one of the actresses that was in the televised version of The Wiz, mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the folks that have done Broadway versions of Wicked, uh, Todrick Hall that did the the Straight Out of Oz album. You know, one of our favorite music videos ever. Uh, you know, that's right. I, I yeah. talked to the the guy that's going to be doing the interview, and I was like, "That was our anthem," and like, oh, yeah. it's so delish. Anyway. So, are, and are you guys all going to be talking in a panel or is it just going to be one interview after the other? You know, I think it's going to be one interview after the other. Oh, okay. uh, I know. I know. That's all right. Well, all good. All good. I'll, It'll I'll still be it. worth watching. It'll still be awesome. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. Because I want nothing more than to you like fan out on Todrick, even if it is like in a Zoom room. <laughs> you know what? I, I would do it. I would do it in a second. I would do it. I'll be like, oh, is you a good witch? Oh, just a bad bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you're all of voting age or close to it. So yeah, it's, can, it's totally fine. Uh, awesome. I have, what? I have one request. Oh, I'm sure. Gonna say. I'm going to supersede. And it's not the sign off, the final sign off. But I just need a little bit of Shannon from OKKO. Because she's in the list. So can you give me whatever of else? Of course. Just Okay, like you losers. Mean. If you're not registered to vote, don't be a loser. Go out and register. We get pick from the uh, from FLCL or yeah. Or, we so far we've I seen uh, FLCL. We've seen Queen Ozma. We've seen uh, Sheena slash Tigress. Uh, so dealer's choice, whatever you want to do. All right. Uh, well, since Zatanna has come up a few times, I will say this is Kari Walgren as Zatanna and with Nerds Vote, Hottest of the Hottest Nash, which is Nerds Vote and Register Backwards. Wait, have you figured out how to talk backwards? That's amazing. That's crazy. 
<laughs> You're like Missy Elliott. <laughs> I kind of am. Yeah. No, we're totally, totally yeah. So you do speak another language. Just to wrap that up, there was a question if you did speak another language. So we're just going to call backwards speak is another language. Yeah. Backwards speak, yeah. So I'm fluent. I'm fluent. So good. Kari, this has been aw It's so always great to hang out with you. Uh, but thanks for joining us on I our I love you show. guys. Mwah, mwah. So good to see you. Thank you to everybody that uh, that tuned in. And uh, what, a, what a treat. Awesome. All right. We'll see you soon. Mwah, mwah. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This was amazing. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting us at Nerds Vote and also our amazing guests. Please make sure that you register to vote by mail. Fill out an application so you can vote by mail. And another little uh, bit of info, if you have time to hit up your reps in support of the HEROES Act to make nationwide voting by mail a possibility and support our postal service, that would be amazing. Because we can't vote by mail if there's no mail. So. We'll have another show uh, next Tuesday at 2 o'clock uh, Pacific, 5 o'clock Eastern. Uh, our guest will be announced on Saturday. So uh, watch this space and uh, follow Nerds Vote. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye, y'all.